talking about shit in Formula One that no one likes. It's in a nutshell! Since we've already talked about two tracks that are actually really shit and not worth having on the calendar, I thought it would be a good idea to talk about a track that is actually good. And what better track to talk about than the illustrious Spa Frankelshaw? host of the Belgian Grand Prix, the Spa 24 Hours, and the 6 Hour Spa Endurance Races to name a few. And the occasional track day where you see someone crash into Eau Rouge at 100 million miles an hour. So let's get started. The original track was built in 1920 when a Chevalier named Jules de Thier was trying to look for a site to revive the Lamu Cup, which had been put to bed thanks to the arrival of World War I. A meeting in a hotel with the Burgomaster of Spa and a racing driver named Henri Langlois van Offen put the groundwork with what would eventually be the first rendition of Spa Frankelshaw. The last time I had a great idea at a hotel, I was asked to leave and given a restraining order. The idea was to have a racetrack in a place 28 meters below sea level. I, I don't see what all the fuss was about. While the original version was about 15 kilometers in length, the version that was used until 1978 was conceived in 1939 to make the circuit faster. By that point, it had become the fastest road circuit in Europe. The only problem was that was the track was made using public roads. That may not seem like a big deal nowadays, yeah. but 300 kilometers an hour cars lying around houses, banks, telephone poles and trees wasn't a very good mix and the track became immediately notable for many driver deaths. One of the most notable examples was during the 1960 Belgian Grand Prix, where Chris Bristow and Alan Stacey were both killed with accidents within 15 minutes of each other. And even one of the greatest drivers of all time, Sterling Moss, was also involved in an accident and was seriously injured in the same race. It wasn't until 1970 where Armco barriers were introduced to the track, which did make deaths somewhat less frequent. The keen word being somewhat. Just don't look at the uh, 1973 24 hours of Spa. Don't do it. After 1978, the track was shortened from 14 kilometers to the 6 kilometer track we're all used to seeing, with the only thing missing from the current version is the original bus stop chicane. Safety was still lacking as driver deaths were still happening, most notably the death of 1984 world sports car champion Stefan Beloff in 1986. And the track had a temporary change at Eau thanks to the deaths of Roland Ratzenberger and Ayrton Senna earlier that F1 season. But the track remained completely unchanged until 2007, when the bus stop chicane and Blanchemont was moved forward and the source moved further away to allow space for a larger pit lane, giving us the version of the track we all know and love today. Unless you're either a traditionalist or a psychopath, in which case, you, pretty, you do pretty well for a Formula 1 fan. So what races do I recommend? Personally, I would recommend the 2008 Belgian Grand Prix, granted that you don't spoil the results in the comments, the 2014 Belgian Grand Prix, which started the most unfathomably annoying rivalry in F1 since Schumacher and Raikkonen, and the 1998 Belgian Grand Prix, a race where almost everything that could have happened in a race happened in this race. It's a fucking shit show. So that's about everything I have for this time round. Join us next time where a creatively banked content creator tries his best to be funny. Fuck off.